Hello, Sigmas. So far, we have been dealing with uh, rigid bodies whose axis of rotation is what I would say frozen in space. For example, here we have a sphere, which is a rigid body. So this is a sphere. And as you can see, its axis of rotation is along, let's say, the Z direction. And uh, let us say it is rotating about the Z direction with some constant angular velocity omega. Or we can also allow it to have some constant angular acceleration alpha. Then for all future times, this axis of rotation remained fixed in direction as well as in location. That is, it never translates, right? It never moves in some direction. But that is exactly what we are going to change in this video. We are going to allow this axis of rotation to move in a certain direction. And if this axis of rotation is passing through the center of mass, then what we can say is we are going to allow the center of mass of the body. That is, we are going to allow this body to translate in some direction. For example, we can let this body translate in this direction with some constant uh, velocity v. Or we can also allow it to translate in that direction with some constant acceleration capital A. Where capital V and capital A stands for the velocities of the center of mass and the acceleration of the center of mass. And now when we allow this uh, body to translate in some direction, we want to know how the various quantities that we found out earlier, for example, the angular momentum and hence uh, the torque, as well as the energy of this body changes. And most importantly, we are going to derive the work energy theorem for rotational motion in this video. So stay tuned. This is going to be the most interesting video on this chapter on rotational mechanics. And it is also going to be the last one. Now, since this is a rigid body, it will be made up of many, many small particles. So let us consider one of those. Let us consider the J particle. This is one of the particles that the body is made up of, the J particle. So what I'm saying is, let's say there are total number of particles of this body is N, capital N. Then we are going to consider one of those particles, which is the J particle. Then what is going to be the angular momentum? of that j particle. I'm going to call it Lj. So Lj is uh, going to be equal to Rj, right? The position vector of that j particle with respect to the origin and its cross product with the momentum of uh, that j particle, which is nothing but Mj into Rj dot, where dot stands for the time derivative, as you all know. Now, we all know that when we look at the particle from the center of mass frame, then our equations become very, very simpler. And that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to break the motion into the motion of the center of mass frame plus the motion of that particle about the center of mass frame. And as you all know, that makes things really simpler. And hence, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to specifically prove Chazel's theorem for this case, which is exactly that, that motion can be broken up into the motion of center of mass plus the motion about the center of mass. Okay, so since uh, this is the angular momentum of that single particle, what is going to be the total angular momentum of the body, capital L? The total angular momentum of the body is going to be the sum of Lj, where J goes from 1 to N, where N is uh, exactly what I told you earlier. It is the total number of particles that the body is made up of. So this becomes equal to, now I'm not going to write the J equal to 1 to N again and again, because it is understood that we are summing over J from 1 to N. So I'm going to drop that and uh, it will become sum over RJ cross MJ into RJ dot. Okay, so now since we want the motion about the center of mass, uh, you should remember what center of mass exactly is. Its position vector, that is the position vector of the center of mass, is given by summation mj rj divided by capital M, where capital M is the total mass of the body. 
and uh, we also know that we can write the position vector of the body or the particle that the body is made up of as equal to the position vector of the center of mass plus the position vector of the particle about the center of mass which i shall call j prime so capital r is the position vector of the center of mass and rj prime is the position vector of the particle about the center of mass then now what we can do is we can substitute this rj over here and if we do that then we get l is uh, equal to that is the total angular momentum which is a vector is equal to summation we have uh, rj there so we can write uh, capital r plus rj prime and uh, we have a cross product with mj into we have rj dot so rj dot is just uh, dot of this plus dot of this right simple derivatives so we get r dot plus rj dot prime because uh, we are looking at it uh, from the center of mass frame now. Now what we can do is uh, we can open up the brackets. So once we open up the brackets, we get capital R cross summation mj into capital R dot plus summation mj rj prime cross uh, capital R dot plus r cross summation mj rj prime dot plus summation mj rj prime cross rj prime dot k so now you might question me that i told you that looking at it from about the center of mass that is from the center of mass frame things would get simpler but this looks uh, horrible right there are four terms with a lot of summations and a lot of variables but as you will find out most of these terms are going to get cancelled out and only two will remain that is two will get cancelled out and two will remain so let us look at the second term first in fact what we are going to look at is the summation term because r is constant capital r is constant so it is just going to come out of the summation or it does not matter whether it's inside the summation or outside so what we are going to do is we are going to look at the summation term so first we are going to look at the second term so the second term contains a summation of uh, mj into rj prime so let us uh, resubstitute uh, rj prime from this equation over here as you can see rj prime is going to be rj minus capital r so that is exactly what we are going to do we are going to write this as summation over mj and rj prime was nothing but rj minus capital r right from this equation over here we can write rj prime as rj minus capital r so now this becomes a sum over mj rj minus a sum over mj into capital r now as i told you capital r is a constant because there is no j on it so it can just come out of the summation symbol and uh, sum over all mj is just the total mass of the body when you sum the mass of all the particles of the body it just gives you the total mass so what you get is sum over mj rj and this is a vector minus capital m into r now look at this carefully do you remember what the definition of a center of mass was look at this definition over here sum of mjrj is just equal to capital m into r and if you subtract both of them you just get zero and hence you can see that the second term goes to zero now let us look at the third term again we are going to be concerned only with the summation symbol that is the term inside the summation now over here you have mj into rj prime dot now we just prove that sum over mj into rj prime is zero and this is just the derivative of the second term the summation term of the second term the summation of the second term this is just the derivative of that so if you take the derivative of zero what do you get yes you get zero again so 
both the second as well as the third term go to zero. So this is equal to zero as well as uh, this one is equal to zero. And hence, we are going to be left with only the first and the fourth term. So we can write the total angular momentum of the body as capital R cross. Now, look at this. As I told you, capital R is a constant. So again, we have a sum over mj, which is capital M. That is the total mass of the body. So I can write the first term as R cross. We have capital M. And uh, R dot, I can just write as capital V. As I told you, capital V is the velocity of the center of mass. So I can just write R dot, capital R dot, as just the velocity of the center of mass. So it will become capital V. Plus, we have the fourth term. So the fourth term just becomes uh, sum over Rj prime cross Mj into rj prime dot now you can easily see why i wrote it in that manner this looks uh, exactly like the angular momentum of that particle about the center of mass and that is exactly what it is it is the angular momentum of that particle about the center of mass and in fact there is a summation so it is the sum of angular momentum of all the particles which make up the body about the center of mass and that's it. We have just proven the Chesel's theorem for this case of rotation as well as translation. We can write the total angular momentum of the body as the angular momentum of the center of mass plus the angular momentum or in fact the sum of the angular momentum of all the particles that make up the body about the center of mass. Now, if you do not know what Chesel's theorem is, I have already explained it in the very first video of my series on rotational motion. And you will find the link to the playlist of that series of uh, videos in my description, in the description of this video. Now, since we have fixed the angular momentum of uh, that body about the z-axis, that is, we have uh, fixed the axis of rotation about the z-axis, we are only concerned with the magnitude of uh, angular momentum along the z-axis that we are going to call Lz. So we want the component of this angular momentum about the z-axis. What is that going to be equal to? It is going to be equal to the component of capital R cross mv along the z-axis plus the component of summation rj prime cross uh, mj into rj prime dot along the z direction. Now, we since we want its component uh, along the z direction, we are going to deal only with uh, magnitudes. And uh, since this is the cross product, you should remember from my video on uh, moment of inertia that if uh, this is the axis of rotation and uh, let us say this is uh, the position vector of some particle and uh, this is the perpendicular distance of that particle from the axis of rotation that we called uh, rho, rho j. This is rho j which is the perpendicular distance uh, of that particle from the axis of rotation and this is rj, this is the position vector and uh, this is the particle. Then uh, this uh, term will become sum over, let me take mj out again, we are not concerned, we only want to, to see what the cross product gives us. So we have rj prime and its cross product with rj prime dot which is just vj prime. Now that becomes uh, equal to sum over and we want its uh, z component. So that becomes uh, equal to sum over mj. And uh, Rj prime cross of Vj prime, we can write it as uh, Rj prime cross. What can I write V as? You know that V is equal to R perpendicular into omega. So V is nothing but it is uh, equal to Rj prime cross omega, right? Rj prime dot. This is equal to Rj prime dot, which is Vj prime. So Vj prime is going to be Rj prime cross omega. And hence, from the definition of cross product, you know that I can write it as Rj prime's perpendicular component into omega, right? Omega, we just want a magnitude, so we will not put the vector symbol. So you know that uh, A cross B 
and its magnitude is just a perpendicular into b that is how we define the cross product we get a sin theta which is the perpendicular component of a and hence we get a perpendicular into b so that is exactly what we are using here we get rj perpendicular times omega but what is rj perpendicular look at this diagram rj perpendicular is nothing but uh, rho j and hence uh, what we will get here is actually vj prime would become rho j into omega and again we have a cross product here so this rj prime will become rho j that is rj perpendicular component of rj so we will get actually a rho j from over here this cross product so we will get a rho j from over there and vj is again a rho j into omega as i showed you so this rho j comes from this rj prime and the cross product and a vj will become vj prime would become rho j again and a omega so actually what we get at the end of the day is summation mj into rho j squared omega but wait that is nothing else but the moment of inertia of the body this summation is the definition of moment of inertia again here we have followed the same reasoning that we used to derive our equation for a moment of inertia or our expression for the moment of inertia so if you have not checked out that video do check it out otherwise you are not going to understand anything that we have done so far okay so this is just the definition of moment of inertia that we are going to call i not and this will become i not into omega and hence so what we have is lz is equal to from over here that is what we wanted to find so lz is equal to i not omega plus the first term which is capital r cross capital m into v and its z component okay so we have solved or we have found the first part that is our, we have achieved our first aim of this video we have found the angular momentum of a rigid body that is not only rotating about a particular axis but it is also translating and if that axis passes through the center of mass of the body then we can write the motion about the center of mass as the chisel's theorem states now let us look at the torque on this body when a certain force is applied on the body so next we are going to look at the torque on the body so the torque on the body is going to be equal to as we define it sum over rj cross fj right as we define it in a similar manner to angular momentum that is uh, r if rj cross fj is the torque on a single particle of the body then the summation over all the particles of the body gives the total torque on the body now again we can write uh, rj as uh, rj prime plus capital r and these are vectors cross fj and we can open up the brackets so we get rj cross fj plus capital r cross sum over fj because capital r is a constant so we can just pull it out of the summation symbol so this will become sum over rj prime so rj prime cross fj plus r cross let me call the total force on the body since it is uh, the summation over fj let me call it capital f let me call the total force on the body capital f and again since our axis of rotation is along the z direction we are concerned only with the component of the torque along the z direction so we want to know what tau z is so tau z is going to be again the component of rj prime cross fj along the z direction plus capital r cross f and its component along the z direction let me call this uh, term this one as tau not okay as you can easily see that is nothing but the torque on a particular particle that makes up the body or uh, about the center of mass and the sum of it so it's the total torque of uh, all the particles that make up the body about the center of mass now from the definition of torque we know that torque is nothing but the rate of change of angular momentum 
And hence, what we can do is we can find tau z also by differentiating lz. So let us do that. Let us differentiate lz with respect to time. So dlz upon dt is going to be equal to here moment of inertia is a constant. So we'll get i naught into omega dot. That is, uh, we are going to differentiate omega. And as I told you, it has a constant angular uh, acceleration of alpha. So we'll just get i naught into alpha plus if we differentiate this term here r is a constant m is a constant only v is there and we know that it is moving with a constant acceleration a so what we will get is r cross m into capital a and it's z component we just differentiated this second term so i can write this as i naught alpha plus capital r cross what is capital m into a it is nothing but the total force on the body so this is nothing but capital f and it's z component now if this has to be equal to tau z then equation number one and equation number two have to be equal and that means tau naught is nothing but it is equal to i naught into alpha okay so we have achieved our second milestone that is we have looked upon what the expression for torque would look like when the axis is accelerating and again we have kind of proved the chaser's theorem for this special case and now at the end of the day we are going to look at last but not the least the work energy theorem for rotational motion so now we are going to look at work energy theorem for rotational motion and in fact the expressions for angular momentum and hence the torque that we derived using angular momentum was for us to understand what a work energy theorem would look like for rotational motion. So we are going to make use of this expression of tau naught. What we are going to do is we are going to multiply that expression on both sides by d theta. So tau naught d theta would be equal to i naught into alpha. Alpha is nothing but d omega upon dt into d theta. Now remember the definition of omega. Omega, let me write it over here. Omega is equal to d theta upon dt. So if omega is equal to d theta upon dt, what is d theta? d theta is nothing but omega dt. And what we can do is we can substitute this d theta over here. So if we do that, if we substitute d theta over there, then we get tau naught d theta is equal to i naught d omega upon dt into d theta is nothing but d omega dt. Now you can see exactly why we did that. We wanted the dt's to cancel. So this dt will get cancelled with this dt. So we will be left with i naught into omega d omega. And then what we can do is we can integrate both sides. Over here we can integrate from some initial angular displacement theta a to some final angular displacement theta b. And over here we can uh, integrate from some initial angular velocity omega a to some final angular velocity omega b. Then what do we get? We get this side, the right hand side equal to half i naught omega b squared minus half i naught omega a squared. Now look at this expression carefully and think about it in terms of what we have been dealing with so far in rotational mechanics. You can easily see that we can generalize that even for the work energy theorem. We have always been replacing force with torque, displacements with angular displacements, mass with moment of inertia and velocity with angular velocity. And you can see that this is nothing else but the work energy theorem for rotational motion because what was the work energy theorem for a translational motion it stated that the integral of f dot dr which was the work the work was equal to f dot dr working going from some a to b it was equal to the change in kinetic energy which was half m v b squared minus half m v a squared now, if you compare your result for rotational motion with your result for translational motion, 
you can see that again i can define this quantity the integral of torque with respect to the angular displacement as w a v that is the work done then what would this become this would be nothing else but the kinetic energy due to rotational motion and hence again we get our work energy theorem that w a b is equal to k b minus k a where the kinetic energy in case of a uh, rotational motion is equal to half i naught omega square so that's it this was i feel the most important video because we generalized the case of rotational motion even when we allowed the axis of rotation to translate about some particular direction and we saw that how we can achieve a parallel between translational motion and rotational motion if you remember the formulas for translational motion you don't have to remember the formulas for rotational motion because you just have to replace let's say mass with moment of inertia force with torque velocity with angular velocity acceleration with angular acceleration and you can derive or you can achieve the results for rotational motion from your results uh, that you had in translational motion and that is what made this video the most enlightened video of this series on rotational motion and this was also the last one so we are done with rotational motion and we are going to begin with non inertial frames from the next video we are also going to discuss some problems before we do that before we begin with non inertial frames we are going to discuss some problems on the work energy theorem of rotational motion say or our chapter on rotational motion some really good problems so stay tuned for that if you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video do share this video with your friends and if you have any queries leave them in the comments see you in the next video thanks for watching